Praise the Lord, everybody. This is C.J. Jackson again, coming from the breadcrumbs. And I know that God is doing something wonderful in all of our lives, whether we are aware of it or not, because the Bible says that he loves us. So in spite of whatever we face, you got to understand the love that God gives is unconditional. In other words, it's not based on what you do. It's based on who he is. He gives love in spite of what we give him. He is love. Amen. I want to share today, as we go back into relationships that we have with God, I want to share a special word that is entitled, for me to live is Christ. For me to live is Christ. And I want to focus on where this passage comes from. It's actually in the book of Philippians, Philippians 1 and verse 21. And the Bible says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But we want to focus on the first part of the passage, for me to live is Christ. In other words, Christ penetrates every part of my life. Now, I really want to focus on that because if we're li living in Christ, we have to understand that Christ is actually a part of my motives. He is a part of my motivation, and he is also a part of my moods. And you might be saying, wait a minute, CJ, what about when I am moody? Well, welcome to the club. All of us have got to deal with the fact that there's going to be a point in time that we're going to deal with moods, but it doesn't change the fact that God, through his son Jesus, wants to alter our moods and make sure that we understand that he shifts depression, he shifts stress, he shifts those things that ultimately bring us to a place where it looks like we're living out more of how what we are going through than who we are. Remember, for to live is Christ. So if I'm living in Christ, there's going to be some things that ultimately I am going to identify. The Apostle Paul said, I believe in 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 1, imitate me as I imitate Christ. In other words, I need to find in my life those things that are in Christ that I need to know are in me as well. And you might be saying, but I don't see those things. Even though you don't see those things, if you are a child of God, those things are in you. You just haven't exposed them yet. Come on, somebody. Those things are accessible and God is wanting you to know those things are there. I'm going to prove it to you. We're going to go over to the book of Ephesians, and we're going to drop into some things that the Apostle Paul shared in a very, very powerful way to show us what actually is in Christ. And I'm going to just share a few, and I hope that you're able to embrace it. The Bible says in verse 7 of chapter 1 of Ephesians, in him we have redemption through his blood. Then we can stop right there. In him. So this is what we live in Christ. We live being people that are redeemed. We are redeemed. In other words, we do not have to deal with our past. We don't have to deal with our luggage. We don't have to deal with our baggage. We know that Christ died on the cross and made us now the redeemed. That means we are worth something. Redemption is a word that deals with money. We are of value. Come on, somebody. You are of value because you live in Christ. Christ wants you to be able to be in a place where you embrace that in a way that even though certain things may not be happening on the outside, you know what Christ has said to you that is going to change you from the inside all the way to the outside. And this is one of those things that are paramount, to have redemption through his blood. Look at this. The Bible says in verse 11, same chapter, in him, we have obtained an inheritance. Come on, somebody. There is something that you are going to obtain because you are in the family of God. You are of the royal nation, the royal priesthood. There is an inheritance that God wants to give you because you are in him. You live in Christ. There is something that is going to be given to you that is part of your inheritance 
that you didn't have to do anything for. Oh, that's good. You didn't have to do anything for it. You didn't have to jump through no hoops. You didn't have to do a whole lot of this or that. It's given to you because you are in the royal family. The third thing I want to look at that deals with in him is that he says in verse 13, in him you also trusted. After you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. That means that when you became a child of God, when you became part of God's family, God gave you a guaranteed promise that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, would be a part of your life. That means every time that you and I are struggling with anything, the Holy Spirit, who is the helper, who is our teacher, who is our guide, who is our instructor, is actually provoking us to live a life that is going to promote that which is Christ. Guess what? This is in him. In him is this. In him is inheritance. In him, we have this redemption. All of this is in him because to live is Christ. If you are living right now in Christ and you have a lot of guilt and a lot of shame and a lot of underlying issues that you've been toting back and forth in your life, I pray today that you would release it and understand from his word, he wants you to be a new creature in Christ. That's right. You can be in Christ and right today, you can be a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. That's for you that have been living in Christ and you've been toting all kinds of things and you need to stop right now and realize, wait a minute, Christ said, I am new. So if I'm new, why am I still living old? Why am I still toting things that should be dead? Why am I still allowing certain things to move and operate in my life when that's not who I am? Remember, to live is Christ. And I pray today that you've been blessed by this word and that you'll always embrace that you've been born to be a blessing. Amen. Back. There are three different divisions that we're going to talk about when it comes to communication today. We're going to talk about number one, speaking and talking. Then number two, we're going to talk about feelings. And number three, we're going to talk about living. Okay.